Hi, I'm Austin Nauert. I'm one of the film programmers here at South by Southwest. Um, today, I am joined by the director, producer, writer, and composer of Le Choc de Futur, uh, Mark, Mark Collin, and uh, lead actress, Alma Yodorowsky. Uh, we're very excited to have this film be a part of the uh, Prime Video Presents uh, South by Southwest 2020 Film uh, Festival Collection. And if you have not, if you're watching this and you haven't seen it um, for the next 10 days, you can go to Prime Video um, in the US and uh, watch this for free in front of the paywall. So please go do that and uh, then come back and watch us talk about it. Uh, so I guess uh, I'll start with you, uh, Mark. Um, I just was kind of, uh, you know, I couldn't believe when I finished the film that this was your first film as a, as a director, your first feature film. And I was wondering um, if you could talk, you know, I definitely know that you've worked as a film composer. Um, but if you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I guess what made you want to tell this story and, you know, how long had this idea been, you know, had you been thinking about this idea? Um, well, thank you. That, well, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of long story because I, I, uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker, you know, when I was like 18 or 20. Uh, I learned cinema in a, in a cinema school. Then after, uh, music came in my life and, you know, and... Uh, and I, I had a lot of things to do in music, so I really focused on music. But a few years ago, I thought, then well, now it's the time because I'm getting older, so it's the time to to go back to this first passion. And uh, I really thought uh, it could be a good idea to do a movie about music, and to a specific, you know, period of time uh, when music was uh, changing, like uh, it was a kind of revolution, and uh, because. I think I can really talk about it because I'm a musician for 30 years now. You know, so that, that's that's the that's the story. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. And then Alma, I was wondering, um, you know, how, how how you got involved in this project and kind of what attracted uh, what attracted you to it. Um, well, Mark contacted me uh, maybe a year before shooting. Um, we had friends in common from the music industry. And uh, so he wrote me an email and, uh, and then we met, we met up and he gave me the script and told me about the, the character and the area and the, the kind of uh, music uh, it was because it was like a very specific um, uh, world this kind of uh, electronic beginning of the electronic music and uh, so I learned a lot about that and I got more and more involved and curious about uh, about what the movie was about and about the character as well and uh, I really liked the fact that it was happening in uh, just one day and um, one day and one night and we really follow her in 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 her um, in her yeah her journey uh, and how she in just one day she can go through a lot of different emotion and she got confronted with a lot of people that are not always so uh, kind to her <laughs> and uh, and we can see just just with this little window that we have uh, on her life that she's like really strong and really motivated by the uh, what she wants to do with her art and her way of expressing herself as an artist. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I actually, you know, so I was re-watching this film the other night preparing for this Q&A and I couldn't help but, you know, I, you talked about it all being kind of in one day and it's it's almost a chamber piece of sorts, you know, it takes, you know, they, they, they do leave Anna's apartment, you know, a few times, but a vast majority of the film takes place in, in her apartment. And it just kind of made me think about how fitting it almost is that it's being released now where we can't leave our houses or our apartments. <laughs> and uh, it's almost very fitting that it's coming out in this coronavirus time. And I was wondering if, you, if, if that thought had crossed your, mind, uh, crossed, your, uh, crossed your mind at all while, you know, while this stuff has been happening? Uh, personally, not at all, but, uh, but it's true, it's true. It's just, it just showed that uh, if we want, we can just do a movie in our apartment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to write something. <laughs> it, also made me think that, <laughs> it also made me think that, you know, uh, the character of Anna probably would be totally fine if this coronavirus hit in the, you know, in the late 70s oh, yeah. when she was, because she would just stay in her apartment and make music all day. Yeah, I think it's just uh, essentially what she wants to do. Like, she doesn't need anything else at this mo moment of her life, at least. But, yeah. Um. And, uh, you know, along those lines, you know, I guess I was wondering if, if both of y'all could talk a little bit about, I guess they call it the cockpit, you know, one of the characters called it the cockpit, but, 
you know, all the kind of incredible modular and analog synthesizers you used in that. And um, I was wondering, Alma, if you, uh, you know, if you actually, you know, were, were, uh, were you actually playing all of it? It seemed like you were in it, but you know, all that stuff to me seems so complicated. So it seems like it would, it would maybe be kind of hard to learn. Yeah, yeah, I, I learned, I learned a little bit. Um, I was, uh, I, I was a bit familiar with synthesizers, but uh, very like simple ones, and nothing like yeah. these ones. So I was really impressed at the beginning, but uh, Mark has a lot of uh, machines at his studio, so I was able to go there and to rehearse on less impressive and like smaller <laughs> size yeah. of a synthesizer. And uh, after when I I uh, went on set and we tried we tried to play with was uh, with with what was uh, on set. And uh, yeah, it was really fun because uh, it's something that is very like, um, it's like a trance, like it's something that you start and you can't really see the end. You never know when the, the music is gonna stop, when the, the song is gonna be really finished because you're like in this cycle like that and you can, you're like hypnotized by it. So it's, uh, it's really cool to, to have fun and to play around with these things, yeah. No, definitely. And, uh, you know, along those lines, you know, one of my favorite scenes is, uh, is when Clara shows up and then you kind of see the creative process of them, of them working together. And um, I also thought it was interesting that Alma, you also have directed one of her music videos, correct? Um, yeah. in, in real life. And I was wondering, you know, which came first and how, you know, how that collaboration happened and how she made her way into the film. Well, the, the movie came first, but I knew Clara actually before the movie uh, because we had friends in common uh, from a band called La Femme. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to sing in that band and I'm a friend with them since uh, a very long time. So I knew her through that and after uh, I, uh, I spent time with her during the, the filming and after that uh, I did this music video with her. And, mm -hmm. uh, no, that, that, that's that's really cool and um you know was you know how i was wondering how the song that, that y'all made came about was it from you mark was it from her was it from you alma like you know i guess how how the composition of the song that really becomes one of the centerpieces of the film um how the composition of that happened and how it came about um everything finally you know we, we decided to shoot like uh, i don't know in, in december and uh we, we decided in december in fact we, we we decided to shoot in february or early March. So it was very quick. So we have to set all the, the, the team and I had to do the music because I, did, I, did, I didn't write on the music because I, I don't like to write, to, to work on something when it's not really real, you know. So I was waiting for that. So suddenly I thought, okay, I have to write this song. So, uh, but I had some ideas and uh, um, I tried to do a song that was like, uh, you know, be possible to produce this music in 78, but in a way, when you listen to it, you can think, oh, it's from the, from the 80s, from the 80s, even from now, actually, from nowadays, yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, after, you know, uh, when I wrote the, the, the script, I, I already thought about Cara to, to, to be the, the singer and to, to play the singer and to sing on the song. So it was very easy, you know, uh, you know, so I, I just called her and she came and we recorded the song and uh, it was not, you know, that, that far from the, the, the sequence, you know, from the, the, the film sequence, we just, we knew a bit improvised and, and after recording. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's exciting. That's amazing. Um, I was also wondering um, about the, uh, you know, but, you know, with the, all the equipment you all had there, did you have any problems with getting it to work? Um, or, you know, was it, uh, you know, you know, was there, was there any issues with it? Kind of all the synthesizers uh, and yeah, things like that. No, I don't think there were any pro technical problems. No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Oh. Maybe That's great. You, thinking about if it was difficult to play when you are around all this. this ah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, no, because it was um, it was like friends, uh, mm -hmm. I think, for for the character and also for myself. It's like it's basically the main character of the movie, 
kind of I mean, yeah. kind of share the, <laughs> the 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 top of the of the film with it, with the machines so so no it was um, it was a cool tool to to experience stuff yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. and um Mark, on your end, I believe you composed uh, the soundtrack for this whole thing, correct? Um, and I was wondering, um, you know, if you already had the exact idea of how you wanted this to sound going into the film, or if, you know, that kind of came about as you were making it, um, just kind of, you know, I guess, where in the process did you have? Because, like, I feel like it set such a good mood. It's almost such a, like, wonderful tone poem, and just kind of, uh, it's kind of easy to get lost in, in a way, while watching it. It's very mesmerizing. So I was wondering, you know, how, how the sound of that came, came about. It was very, very funny because uh, before making this movie, uh, I, I wrote like uh, 10 soundtracks, you know, so I was work only working as a composer, you know, so and when I'm working as a composer for, for movies, you know, I like to be to have this freedom, you know, to have all the, the, the footage, the images and to just improvise, to create a, a sound, a mood. But so I thought I will do the same with my movie. But finally, I, I realized that what I really like is to put other music, not my music, you know, other music, tracks I like. And I, as well, it's on the story of the movie because the, the, the character of Alma, Anna, in the, in the movie, she's discovering all this music, you know, from friends, from DJ, you know, and that th th these tracks are inspiring uh, her, you know, to make this new sound. So it was important to put all this music, all these tracks from uh, Devo, from, uh, you know, Suicide, all these, all these bands. So I, th there was not a lot of space for, you know, uh, original soundtrack, original music. So yeah. I, just, uh, I just wrote the, the main song and just one other, another one. And that's it. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. And uh, you know, I, I did think it was wonderful going through that film because I definitely either discovered some new artists or you know, myself, there's an artist like, you know, like Robin Gristle I've been meaning to listen to for years and I finally did because I saw this film. So I thought that was like a, a, a really cool like, kind of personal touch. And I also loved seeing all the like, you know, music memorabilia, like the Brian Eno album and the kind of Tangerine Dream and all that stuff around the apartment. It seemed like a very yeah. in place by, you know, yeah. someone. Who there's a lot of, lot of little things uh, everywhere that you can recognize. Yeah, George Moroder, Patti Smith, uh, you know, posters everywhere. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, that, that also kind of brings me uh, to, uh, to the end of the film and uh, the, the kind of dedication, which I actually, which I, which I love so much um, to all the kind of pioneers, you know, the uh, women pioneers in electronic music. Um, some of these are some of my favorite artists, like, like Lori Spiegel, whose music is used in the film and people like that. But then there's also some people that I wasn't quite aware of. And I just was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that dedication and, uh, you know, I guess how that played into, into the film. Um, it's just that um, when I uh, when I decided because the first when I wrote the first version of the script it was a man the character was a man and finally I had this idea that I should change uh, because I I, I saw uh, an interview of Laurie Spiegel from the 70s and it and she was amazing you know the music I, i'm a fan of her music first you know but i, I never really watch her you know in the video and it's true that now with youtube you can see everything almost so i discovered all this footage from from her and and she was so cinematographic you know like she was so 70s it's really the 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 the, the, the reference for the the, the character of, uh, of that alma has played i think it's it's she's it's low, low and I have talked to her after, it was, it was great to, to be in touch with her. And, uh, and yeah, for, for the others, I think it was uh, just a way to, to say that uh, when we are talking about electronic music, we are almost never talked about all these women. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a good way that some people will discover their names and their work. Yeah, no, I, th I thought that was wonderful. Um, and what, what I also was wondering is if either you all knew, um, you know, if, if our festival had gone forward this year, we were playing a documentary called Sisters with Transistors that basically was about every single person that, that you had in that dedication. So I thought it was, you know, would have been kind of an amazing double feature, kind of, you know, very yeah. much would have complemented yeah. each yeah. other. So, uh, so I thought mm -hmm. that was kind of a really cool thing to see both those films show up um, in the same year. Mm -hmm. oh, that was cool. I didn't know that. Um, uh, almost, you, uh, you, 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 we can watch it. 
we can watch it. This, uh, um, this it is not a part of the Prime Video um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, collection that we're working on, but it, it was a part of our official um, selection. And hopefully, it'll be coming out into theaters. Or not, you know, I guess not much will be in theaters soon. Hopefully, it'll be coming out online soon, or or once theaters <laughs> open back up, we'll be able to watch it in theaters. Um, um, and I was uh, wondering, you know, so Mark, this was your first film, and and Alma, are are you gonna? Do you plan to go into directing at all? You know, you, you did direct one of Claire's music videos, and um, uh, I was wondering if uh -huh. you kind of had thought, you know, thought of getting into that that area going forward. Yeah, I'd like to do more. Uh, I also I directed another music video for Corinne, who is actually also in the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, it was really fun to do. And this year I just did a, a short documentary about a photographer called um, Laure Tibergian. And uh, so yeah, I just, I finished um, all the post-production and it's going to be out, uh, I think in September online also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll see what's next, but yeah, I'd like to do more. Oh, that's that's great. And then, Mark, I was wondering, you know, after this film, you know, with, with this film coming out, you know, I guess what's next for you on the on the directing side of things? If you already have another project in the works, or, or... sure, sure, sure. Uh, I wrote a, a biopic, you know, uh, a movie about the life of the French musician Eric Satie, you know, the classical uh, music, yeah. musician. Uh, I think the script is ready. I think I have uh, the main character now, uh, and so. Uh, Hopefully, I will shoot uh, early next year. Mm. Okay, that's that's great. Um, all right. Well, uh, I just wanted to say thanks to both of y'all. Thanks, Alma and Mark uh, from Les Shocks the Future for for being here for this Q and A. And I wanted to say uh, thanks to everyone for watching the uh, Prime Video presents South by Southwest 2020 Film Festival collection. Check out all of the South by Southwest social media channels for more ways to engage with us. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>